Gracious and loving God, how would you have us decide those important things in life? Are you giving me this woman to marry? Or will you be sending me another? Do I buy this new car or do I spend money on needed repairs of my old car? Do I buy the name brand or will generic suffice? Should I continue to buy my children more and more when they hardly use the things I buy at all? How would you have me decide, O oh God? For I'm often confused, often wondering, what should I do? Be in me, Lord, and provide for me the decisions that will make a difference not only in my life, but in the lives of others. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Back in 1988, Joanne and I, while we were living in New England, jumped into our first disciple Bible study class. I invite all of you to do the same this fall. We'll have a number of classes available to you. But I remember meeting on that first evening, class gathered, and as an icebreaker, the leader asked a question. How was it, he asked, did you decide to commit to 36 weeks of Bible study? One woman quickly responded that she wanted to go deeper into God's Word. That's why she decided to join up. A man thought for a minute and said, you know, I, I really need to be honest. I have not spent much time reading God's Word. And in this class, it's told to me that we will be touching on many major themes throughout Scripture. I, I look forward to reading the Bible. Another woman said, I haven't spent much time in the Old Testament, and I look forward to learning something from it. A little bit of a wise guy said, well, the decision for me to join the class was pretty easy. My wife signed us both up. That, that, that was me that, that said that. <laughs> I didn't want you to jump in, so I had to confess, had to confess that. Then there was a man sitting next to me, and this is what he had to say. God told me to sign up for this class. The teacher was caught off guard. He said, could you explain a little bit more? He said, yeah. Every decision I make, I go to God, and I allow God to direct me in that decision. Can you expound a little bit more, the teacher has said. Let me give you an example. I get up every morning, get dressed, have breakfast, and I ask God every morning when I should leave the house and go to work. You know, I've never had an automobile accident. I've never been late to work. But in listening to the radio, I know that I have missed many problems out there on the highways. I'm sitting next to this guy, and I'm saying to myself, you've got to be kidding me. Going to God for direction in every decision in life? What are you, nuts? Hasn't God gifted us with the ability to make decisions in our lives? But I knew this guy for 12 years that I lived in New England. He lived right down the street from me. And we had the opportunity to do a lot of things together. And he consistently through the years would pray to God, asking God what his next move should be. As you can see, I'm having trouble shaking this character out of my memory. But when I remember him, I also remember the words that are spoken over and over again in Scripture. Call upon the Lord, and God will reveal to you all things. How is it that you make decisions in your lives? 
There's a powerful Old Testament story of a king who goes up to the rooftop one day, looks out over the city. It's a magnificent city, but he does not see its glory and magnificence. What he sees is chaos and insurrection, violence and strife, economic and social woes. This king standing up there on a roof knows that his tiny nation is surrounded by his enemies. This king knows that there are those even closest to him that present viable threats to him. He knows that important decisions have to be made and he knows that he is the one who is going to have to make those decisions. So standing there with a heavy heart, an anxious heart, he cries out to God, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, that I might fly away and be at rest. But he knows there will be no rest, only tough decisions to make. Sounds like a modern day story, doesn't it? What with all the events, even in the last week, the commander-in-chief having to fire a general who oversees the troops in Afghanistan, a viable threat? The oil spilling out of an uncapped gusher in the bottom of the ocean, destroying life in the Gulf. And not just sea life or plant life, but individuals' lives economic and social woes. Difficult times are upon us. Listen to National Public Radio this past week, and it seems that the automobile dealers are borrowing tactics that the real estate companies use to cause the great collapse in America in these past few years. They're bundling fraudulent loans and selling them to large banks and even to financial institutions on Wall Street. And their thinking is, and their decisions are, that the government will certainly step in, not allowing the big banks to fail. Oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. But there is no rest. Only tough decisions to make. And who will make those important decisions for us on national affairs, on economic affairs? And where can we go to trust those individuals to make decisions that are fair and right and just? I talked to a young man last week. He had great fear that his child would be taken from him. He had had custody of his daughter for the last few years. But his wife would soon be released from prison. And her promise to him was that her first stop would be in the court system to regain custody of her daughter. He knows full well that courts often choose to have the child be with the mother and not the father. And he's invested a lot of time and effort to make sure that she walks paths that are true and just and right. Who will be his voice in the decisions that will be made? There's a great old fable of the eagle flying high amid the mountain tops one frigid morning. The eagle was waiting for the sun to rise to warm the day. The sun began peeking through those mountain peaks and illuminated the valley below. The eagle, with his keen sight, looked down, only to see a log floating slowly along a slow-moving river. And he chose to get down and rest on that log for a while, so he swooped down and found himself at rest. From high above, he could see that rapids were up ahead, and he chose to remain on the log and ride out the rapids. But he also knew that there was a waterfall ahead, 